Well, all right, everyone, and welcome to What's in My Digital Wallet 2024. And as you can see, we have a nice amount of cards in there. And I love watching these types of videos in terms of what's in my wallet because it gives you some ideas and lets me look into some strategies that other people do. So I figured I'd do the same thing, but I'm a big fan of Tap to Pay and Apple Pay and the digital wallet aspect of everything because I don't really like to carry a physical wallet on me if I don't have to. So that's why I'm gonna go over my digital wallet and talk about everything that I use in there from a credit card standpoint and making sure that I'm maximizing each category of spend from rent to groceries to gas to charging your electric car and everything in between. So without further ado, let's talk about what's in my digital wallet 2024 edition and hopefully you guys get a good idea of what exactly I'm doing. And I won't be going over each car specifically in terms of everything that it has, but I will give you guys a 10,000 foot view of exactly what I use those cards for specifically, but let's get into it everybody. So let's start off with what I spend the most money on every single month, which is my rent category. So we don't actually own a home, so we don't have a mortgage, we have a rent payment. And with the built MasterCard, you're able to fully take advantage of that. And now I know that you can technically pay depending on your renting situation. Some people have different portals. You can technically pay with any credit card. You just have to pay that 2.5% or 3% transaction fee, which does add up depending on how much you're actually paying per rent. It could be $50. $150, $200 transaction fee, which at the end of the day isn't really worth it. But if you want to pay your rent with zero transaction fee and then be able to transfer those points to a partner like an Air France or a Hyatt, then the bill card is right now the only thing that actually offers this. So you get one point for every dollar spent on rent every single month. And for us, that added up very quickly to about 50,000 points for the entire calendar year of 2023. And then we took those 50,000 points and then transferred that over to Air France on January 1st, which was their big rent day, and got 125% boost on that, which equated to about 115,000 Air France points, which is enough to fly you round trip in business class or fly you business class for two people one way, which is exactly what we're going to do. So that is what we use for our rent category. And you do have to have up to four more transactions, so a total of five transactions per month to get those actual points. So every now and then we'll throw it in there for maybe a dining situation or a coffee shop or throw a subscription service on there just to make sure we're hitting all five transactions. And you do get 3x points back on dining, 2x points back on all travel, and then 1x points back on everything else. So for a zero fee annual card, it's really hard to complain about it, especially because on, on the first of every single month, which is the rent day, they double those categories to 6x on dining, 4x on travel, and 2x on everything else besides rent. Rent is going to be always one point per dollar spent. So we use that card on occasion, especially if we do go dining on January 1st. And if you guys want to see my stacking guide on how I was able to stack and get up to 41% cash back, on an actual built dining situation. You should definitely watch this video right here and I'll link it down below for you guys to check out because it's a very nice stacking situation. So on the first of every month, we go and eat and get about 40% cash back depending on where you live. But that is what we use the built MasterCard. It's gonna be mostly for rent. And the next card I'm gonna go into is actually our American Express Gold Card. So this is gonna cover our grocery category as well as most of our dining category. And I'll talk about the grocery one because for Q1 of this year, we're doing something a little bit different. But for the most part, for most of the year, this is gonna be our grocery card because we get 4X back on any US supermarket up to $25,000. And then you also get 4X back on all dining and that's worldwide dining, which is great to see. So that is basically what we use it for. We do have some credits on there, like a $120 Uber credit per year, which is $10 a month. And then another $120 at $10 a month at some other like Grubhub and Cheesecake Factory. So every now and then, I'm not going to say we totally maximize that and get the $10 effective annual fee, but we do on occasion maybe get a random cheesecake because it's on the way home from Cheesecake Factory or we'll pick up something from Shake Shack because we do get $10 off. So that is what we use the gold card for, very simple. And that has a $250 annual fee. And I saw the sign-up bonus anywhere from 60 to 90, but I'll leave a link down below for the best sign-up bonus that I find on all of these cards. And that is the best way to support this channel. So thank you in advance. And now I quickly want to talk about what I'm doing for groceries for Q1 of this year. And we're using the Chase Freedom Flex card. Now, I did make a video on how I'm getting 9x back in Q1 of this year. So Q1 goes from January all the way to March 31st of 2024. And the reason I'm able to get a full 9x back is twofold. So firstly, I signed up for this card about nine months ago, and the sign-up bonus consisted of 20,000 Chase Ultimate Reward points after spending $500, but then also getting 5% back on all grocery purchases up to 60,000 points for an entire year on groceries with that Freedom Flex card. So that sign-up bonus will run out around March 31st when I did sign up for this card last year. So once that's done, then we'll completely go back to the gold card. And then on top of that, the Chase Freedom Flex does have rotating quarterly categories, and for this quarter, groceries is part of that. So for right now, what I'm getting is 5x back because of the sign-up bonus, and then 5x back because of the actual quarterly rotating category. The way that this breaks down is that you get one base point per dollar spent, and then you get 4x back because of the quarter category, and then another 4x back because of that sign-up bonus, which equates to 9x back total. It's not 10x back, but it is 9x back. 
And the other day I spent $150 and I got like 1300 Chase Ultimate Reward Points in my actual account. Now this is limited to up to $1,500 to spend on that quarterly category. So you can get almost 15,000 Chase Ultimate Reward Points if you do max this out for Q1. And that is how I've been stacking that for groceries for Q1 for right now. But then after that, once this quarter is over and once that sign up bonus is over, we will migrate all of our grocery spending back to the gold card. And now the next card we're going to talk about is the first premium travel credit card that we're going to mention. And this is the newest one to the actual party, which is the Capital One Venture X. Now the main reason we got this is because we had a big expense coming up and I knew that I could get pre-approved for this and approved for this card. And I just wanted to get that minimum spend because we are going to be using things like Aeroplan from Air Canada. And getting those 75,000 miles in a span of like one day is going to be very easy for us in terms of maxing out that reward. And then secondly, this was already on my 2024 roadmap in terms of getting this card because it does have an effective annual fee that's very easy to hit of $5.00 a positive value because you get a $300 travel credit that you can book through the Capital One Porter for any hotel stays, flights, or even rent-a-cars, and we're going to actually use that right away. So that's already $300 that I'm getting that already offsets that $395 annual fee. And then every year that you hold this card, you get an additional 10,000 miles, which technically in the portal equates to $100. But if you know how to maximize it, if you do watch these videos and watch this channel, then you know how to get way more value out of those 10,000 points. So that is why we got the Venture X. And then finally, it will be our catch-all card because you get 2x points on everything. Aside from that, there aren't any other good categories aside from getting 10x back on some special hotels through the Capital One portal and then 5x back on all travel. But I use it as my catch-up card. So right now it's our Amazon card and it's our random category card. So 2x back is great to see because then we can transfer that out to like Aeroplan and Air France and those types of airlines. Not really to many hotels because we don't really like the hotel partners that Capital One has, but it has great flying partners. And now the next premium travel credit card that we do have is the Chase Sapphire Reserve, which is something that we recently upgraded to. So I had the Chase Sapphire Preferred for two years, and instead of like applying for the Chase Sapphire Reserve or having my wife apply for it, I just upgraded it because there is that beautiful $300 credit that we used immediately a few months ago when on a road trip and we had to stay at a couple of hotels. But this does come with a $550 annual fee, and this card doesn't really get used day-to-day -to -day too much. The main reason we got it is because of all the perks you get, not really its spending categories. You do get 3x on dining and 2x on any type of travel and transportation. You get 5x on travel through the actual Chase travel portal and things like that, and then 1x back on everything else. But what I like about this is the perks you get. So as I mentioned, you do get that $300 travel credit, which is probably the most robust travel credit that you can get. Like I mentioned, the Capital One travel credit is limited to the Capital One portal versus the travel credit on Chase's Sapphire Reserve is literally any and all travel. So even if you're somebody that doesn't go, go on flights or stay at hotels, this is still gonna be good for subway transportation, for lifts, for Ubers, for bus travel, for anything that involves transportation, even parking and things like that, you know, renting a U-Haul, that's gonna be part of the travel category. So if you guys are somebody that maybe commutes to the city every single day and you spend, you know, $5 a day, that is gonna cover a couple months of your travel by itself because it will automatically give you a statement credit for $300, which is an amazing thing to see. So that was the number one reason, but then you also get a bunch of other perks that do give you a nice effective annual fee. So first off, we use Instacart already, so having Instacart for a year, plus getting $15 every single month to use towards Instacart, which is the grocery delivery service, that's in there as well. And then we also are Lyft users, so you do get an automatic Lyft Pink membership through the end of 2025, I believe. That allows us to travel and get discounts on Lyft pickups and stuff like that. And that alone, I believe, is a $200 value if you do pay for it out of pocket. And then finally, you do get the best priority pass version of any of these travel credit cards because you do get the full version of priority pass and also you do get the priority pass restaurants. So there are some actual airports that don't have priority pass lounges that you have access to, but they could have one of the 35 restaurants that are part of priority pass. So this priority pass obviously gets you into lounges that are part of the priority pass network, but also gives you $28 for up to two people at one of these restaurants if there isn't a lounge. So if you wanna go get a quick bite to eat and stay at a restaurant for a few minutes or an hour or two, you can then do that and kind of make that your quasi lounge because you do get almost $30 to actually spend on any food at the actual restaurant itself. And that is also the reason why I didn't bring a priority pass on the Venture X, because the, the Venture X does give you priority pass access as well as Plaza Premium access, but I actually use the priority pass that we get from the Sapphire Reserve more so than the Venture X, but that's to each their own. And then of course, Capital One and Chase are coming up with their own lounges to compete with the Centurion lounges that Amex has, and there's little by little getting dispersed. You have some in Dulles Airport, you have some in Boston, you have one at LaGuardia for Chase, which is supposed to be beautiful. I still haven't seen either of them because you know Newark and JFK don't have them, but let's see if one of these days we get the chance to go to either the Capital One lounges or the Chase Sapphire lounges. 
And then two more cards I want to bring up, which are zero fee annual cards. The first one is my Chase Business Inc. Unlimited card, which I actually applied to about a year ago. And I use my own personal social security number. I don't have a EIN or a secondary business that I did this through. You're able to apply for it as long as you can kind of prove that you make some additional money on the side. You can actually apply to any business credit card if you want to. And the main reason I got this is because at the time, they were doing a 90K sign-up bonus. It was a zero fee annual card, and it was about a $6,000 spend to get that 90K sign-up bonus. We got that 90K sign-up bonus. And then before we had the Venture X, which we just got, this was our catch-all card because it does give you 1.5X on everything from a category perspective. So it doesn't have great categories otherwise, but that's pretty much all you need to know from that card. It's gonna be very rare that I use that card at all anymore because we already got the 90K points from the sign-up bonus, and we already have the Venture X, which gives you 2X miles. The only reason I would use it is if I want to build up more chase points to kind of transfer them to Hyatt versus building up Capital One miles in those transfer partners because sometimes each point and mile kind of currency isn't one to one. Like the 1.5x is probably more valuable as the 2x if you are staying at higher properties because higher properties give you a much better valuation and things like that. We'll dive into that maybe in another video, but but that is the Chase Business Inc. Unlimited that kind of just stays in my wallet and doesn't get used anymore. And then lastly, it is probably the card that I've had the longest, which is the Apple card. So this was before I got into the travel hacking. You know, I'm definitely a big Apple fanboy. If you guys know, you know. But I do have the Apple card as my Apple wallet. And the only thing that I use the Apple card for is for Apple products. So I use it when I buy my iPhone. I use it when I buy MacBooks or iPads. I use it for all in-app purchases and things like that. I believe it's a great... I believe it's a great cash back card if you are team cash back because it has the best interface out of any bank or any system. You get the daily cash back, which is very rare. So at the end of the day, if you spent money on that card immediately that same day or the day after you get access to that card, which can then be used as an actual debit card, which is an amazing thing to see. But for the most part, I just use it for interest fee financing on Apple products, 3% cash back on all Apple services and products. And that's pretty much it. Outside of that, I don't ever use that card only for Apple products. So now the last thing I want to do is add up all the annual fees and see exactly how much we're paying. And secondly, this is a two-player system. For instance, the bill card and the American Express is my wife's cards. And then all the other cards that I mentioned are my personal cards. But we kind of just put them together and we allow each other to use them in our digital wallets. But from an annual fee standpoint, you have 550 for the Chase Sapphire Reserve. You have 250 for the American Express Gold card. You have $395 for the Venture X card. And then the rest of the cards are zero annual fees. So if you add that up, it's 550 plus 250, which is 700, then 395, which is $1,095 for all the credit cards that I have. And for the most part, we do get a kind of neutral effective annual fee or maybe even come out on top depending on how we use it, how much we travel. We definitely always use the travel credits because those are the easiest to use. And in terms of all the perks and coupons that you get from all these cards, your mileage may vary in terms of how much you use it. Like I mentioned, we don't always use that $10 credit for Uber Eats and we don't always use that $15 credit for Instacart, but for the most part, we do kind of come out on top for that effective annual fee and that will just about do it for this video everybody leave a comment down below of what you guys think about my credit card strategy what you think about what's in my digital wallet always curious to know what you guys have is there maybe a card missing that i should jump into my next card is probably going to be the chase hyatt card just because we stay at chase properties all the time and we want to get status on chase properties and things like that and you know 30,000 chase points is pretty nice to have because you can stretch those 30,000 points to stay at category one hotels and things like that but that's another video that we have in the works but that will do for this video like i said curious to know exactly what your credit card strategy is what card you use most often and like i mentioned if i should include some other cards in 2024 but for now since i just got approved for the venture x i'm gonna wait a little bit before applying to anything maybe another two or three months but that could also change but that will do for this video if you guys want to watch more videos like this click on one of these videos right here and until next time i'm fernando if you guys do want to support the channel all the links for these cards in the referral programs are down in the description it would mean a lot peace everybody